Hi, my name is Marion Kelmer, and I'm a fourth generation farmer from Western Illinois. And uh, the thing I've been looking at here for many years um, is the use of fertilizer. And um, I'm an independent ag researcher and I've been doing that since the middle eighties. What I've really identified here just in the last four to five years is a problem called stratification. And so if you've been following my work, um, it's, it's a struggle for me uh, because I'm a long-term no-tiller and uh, I love preserving the soil. So in 2020 was when we definitely had identified that I had stratification. It wasn't a myth and uh, everybody was telling me it's not an issue. Well, I beg to differ, it is an issue. And so the way to identify it at your farm, if you want to, uh, you can call our front office and we'll send you one of these nice probes. But uh, I've already uh, uh, pulled the core. And so what we do is uh, we cut it into one inch increments uh, with your buck knife and on an eight inch core. And so you get eight different segments and then you take one inch and put it into a bag. That's the bottom inch, eight inches, and then seven inches into the bag, and then six inches into a different bag, and so on and so forth. And so you're able to identify pretty quickly um, if you've got stratification at your own farm. Maybe not everybody does, but boy, for me here in, in Western Illinois, um, I definitely do. So <clears throat> here's the data that I came up with. And, and we'll put the fine numbers up on the screen, but basically what we're getting is the funnel effect. We have excessive amounts of nutrients on the surface, and then we have nutrient deficits where the roots are at or eight inches down below. So you can kind of see that funnel effect. And this is just isn't a no-till problem, it's, it's a management problem. When we spread phosphorus and potassium on the surface, they stay on the surface. They only move about one to two inches at most. So the, the big question is their yield advantage. And so early on, I was checking uh, no fertilizer versus with fertilizer. And the thing that I noticed was that I wasn't getting enough yield to pay for the fertilizer, spend $50, grow soybeans, and maybe I'd get $25 for the grain. It's just not gonna make it. So I assumed <laughs> that phosphorus potassium weren't doing me any good, but the problem was that I was surface applying the P and K. And so now we're identifying the yield advantage as we incorporate it. So in 2021, the fall of 2021, uh, we de-stratified one of our fertility plots and uh, the independent research that I do, we always run the length of the field. These are quarter mile rows. So we're running 80 rod, we're always 60 feet wide. So we run with fertilizer without, with fertilizer without, move across the field like that. So we went in and de-stratified with the moldboard plow and we mixed those nutrients down into the profile and we were successful at getting them about halfway down. So we'll also put this data up on the screen for you. And uh, you can see that after we incorporated those nutrients into the soil profile, that we were able to take that excessive amount and move it about halfway down. So we're in that four inch to six inch zone. And now we've got normal fertility in the top two inches. We've got the, the higher fertility in the two to six inch. And then back down at the bottom, we're still a little bit low down there. So um, the next question was, um, is there a yield advantage in soybeans? So after we moldboard plowed the following spring, we just planted the beans. We'd leveled it off in the fall, but we just planted the beans uh, right into that area. And last fall, we found a nine bushel advantage. So. We had a pretty decent growing season last year, but still nine bushel at $15, um, it's $135 an acre, 1,000 acres of beans, that's $135,000 per year. So now 
We determined that that was a good thing to do. Not that I've got a moldboard plow or everything, but in 2023, now we want to find out what's the yield advantage in corn. So we're standing out here today, we're in the plots, and we're gonna look at three scenarios here and we'll be moving across here so you can see the difference in how the corn looks today. Uh, we are the uh, uh, 9th of June. Uh, we haven't had any rain in I don't know, four to six weeks and we had a lot of hot weather. So we're not a lot different than a lot of other people. Corn rolls every day, showing some stress. The beans still look pretty good. The corn actually looks pretty good. So anyway, we're standing in the plot where we've had 15 years and we've added no phosphorus or potassium. And the thing that we noticed is this corn's about uh, 20 inches um, in height on, on an average. But the other thing that we can notice is the, uh, the yellowness or the color of uh, the leaves. And uh, you, maybe you can see it right here but the yellowness or the burnt part is right here on the edge of the leaf. So whenever you see yellow leaves, some people think it's nitrogen, some people think it's potassium. And I wanna tell you that the outer edges, as I believe, is, is showing a potassium deficiency and, and the corn's just barely 20 inches tall. So yesterday we took some soil tests, we had a seminar here, a field tour with the Blackhawk East uh, Ag students. And uh, so we've got uh, tissues, uh, samples that we're gonna send off to the lab. Um, but anyway, that gives you an idea of, uh, of what we see there with when we have no, uh, no P and K at all. So the, uh, the other thing that we're noticing this year uh, with the drought, the early season drought and the high temperatures is that compaction uh, really magnifies some of the flaws that I have in my management system and uh, Obviously the sidewall compaction, even though we thought that was just looked pretty dry, um, we started in planting um, right after Easter. So, all right, we're gonna shut her down here. We're gonna move over uh, 120 feet to another plot. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what it looks like when we have the P and K or we put it just on the surface. Hang in there, we'll be right back. So we moved over uh, 120 feet and uh, we are now in the plot that's uh, 15 years, it's been getting uh, phosphorus potassium. We put on $50 uh, in the fall surface applied uh, prior to planting beans, and then um, $100 per acre P and K uh, prior to planting corn. And so by the looks of my stratification data and the math that I've done on it, um, we've got well over a um, thousand, dollars worth of fertilizer it's sitting in the top two inches so you can kind of look at this data if you want and uh, it gives you some kind of an idea long-term phosphorus potassium on the surface does create stratification so let's talk about the size of the plants these look a little better i mean even though the the fertilizer the p and k wasn't incorporated um, the plants look better um, we just don't see near the, the amount of yellowing, uh, but we still have compaction. And uh, so we have a penetrometer um, and, and this has been no-tilled and uh, we can uh, push it down into the ground here. And uh, there are certain places where the gauge wheels are at. It's really tight. And then there's other places where it goes on down. So. Uh, with drier growing seasons, um, compaction becomes much, much more of an issue. Um, we're also seeing a little bit of sidewall compaction. We might have pulled the trigger a little too early, or we should have put some spader wheels on here as well. But, uh, you know, as, as we walk around through this plot that's 60 foot wide, um, you can see it's a little shorter, but still it, it's taller than no fertilizer at all and it's about 30 inches. And normally um, on the 9th of June, you would say that's some, some pretty good corn. So uh, anyway, that's what we're seeing here. We're anxious to see what it is when we uh, harvest. Um, we are seeing a little bit of yellowing um, at this stage. Uh, we did pull the uh, um, plants yesterday that we're gonna let them air dry and send them off. 
Um, so uh, yeah, I can see, I can see one leaf over here, one plant, and uh, you can you can see there's some yellowing going on here, but uh, it's not a lot of them. But uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, what we're seeing visually. So we're going to shut down, move over to the last plot where we've actually incorporated uh, the P and K down into the profile. Now we're in the last research plot that I wanted to talk about today. And uh, this one here, um, at least 15 years, where the P and K um, has been applied. But then just in the last two years, uh, we came in and moldboard plowed this one two falls ago. And uh, then we came in last fall, put the fertilizer on it, and then we chisel plowed the bean stubble. Again, mix that uh, phosphorus potassium into the root zone instead of leaving it up on top. So it's had P and K for 15 years, but it's only been incorporated for about the last two years. And obviously the first thing that you see is that we've got corn that's almost waist high. I I'm just really excited about how this plot looks. Um, we haven't had any rain. Uh, we've had a lot of heat and it seems to be doing just, just fine. I mean, from a compaction point of view, um, this one's certainly got a lot less compaction. But then we get down about eight inches or so, and of course, then we can we can see that plow pan uh, a little bit harder. Um, but the the corn seems to be doing quite well. The color is great, and the height is, is there as well. So <clears throat> the last thing to find out how much yield advantage is there going to be between these three scenarios? No fertilizer, P and K on the surface or P and K, it's incorporated. I'm gonna to venture to guess by the looks of the corn right here during the drought, that we're gonna see a significant yield advantage. Um, and this plot and the one that I just talked about have exactly the same amount of fertilizer. Um, and then we apply herbicides east and west, uh, nitrogen goes on at a diagonal. And so we try to do all those kind of things. But uh, uh, you can see <clears throat> here on the data, uh, after we mow board plowed, um, you can see that uh, we used to be at 130 or so here in the top inch on phosphorus and we got it down to 51. Uh, but the majority of the nutrients in this profile are in that three to six, seven inch area. And that's where the roots are at. And that's where there's the moisture. And of course, with every passing day, um, this, this soil gets drier. Um, they got a little rain in a forecast for us for Sunday. Um, but uh, you got to have uh, several things present in order to make nutrients move up into the plant. Got to have some air. You got to have some roots. You got to have nutrients. And you got to have water. And this is a perfect example in a drought year of the negative effects that take place if your nutrients are stratified in the top two inches. So my plan as I move in the future right now, um, I'm, I'm a long-term no-tiller. Uh, I think we're gonna take about 100, 100 acres every year and we're gonna try uh, maybe chisel plowing it to east and west and then north and south, try to mix it up. And then we'll go back into a no-till environment and we're gonna move to strip till. Uh, that means that we'll be, uh, whether it's on 30 inch rows, 20 inch rows, <clears throat> uh, we will We'll strip it in the fall, put the anhydrous in the ground. We will also blow the phosphorus and the potassium in the ground at the same time. And then last but not least, we may blow some pelaline because we're, we're looking at a soil warrior, got three chambers, and uh, we'll start to yield check of that as we move to the future. So I own some over a thousand acres. We're gonna do about a hundred acres a year, right or wrong, and then go back into a no-till environment. So hopefully this gave you something to think about um, maybe this is happening at your farm, maybe it's not. Maybe cover crops are the answer, maybe they're not. Uh, certain soil types maybe don't hold the P and K and they move into the root zone. Other soil types like mine, I can honestly tell you, uh, the, the nutrients, phosphorus, potassium that's placed on the surface will stay on the surface. So with that, thanks for watching the video. Um, if you ever have any questions, uh, feel free to call my cell phone at 309-368-1182. If you got any agronomic questions, 
If you need help setting your combine this fall, give me a holler, be happy to help you with that one. And last but not least, if you want to tune up your corn head and uh, be able to chew up the uh, corn stalks and make them into confetti, uh, we have a kit for that. And our front office is uh, 309-629-9000. And last but not least, we have hundreds of YouTube videos and educational material on our website, calmercornheads.com. With that, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I hope you get some great weather this growing season. And uh, I hope to see you this fall as I travel around the country at uh, trade shows and conferences where I'll be speaking. Have a great day. Thank you.